Mr. Ben looked out of his window at number 52, Festive Road. It was a very ordinary street. Not a lot was happening. Mr. Leslie was showing some plants to Mr. John. Ladies were talking. And young Vicky was being scolded for chasing a cat. Mr. Ben smiled and decided to go for a walk. He went in from the window and soon appeared at the front door wearing his hat and coat. At first, Mr. Ben walked in the park at the end of the road. He sat for a while and watched the birds in the trees. and dogs who seemed to be taking their owners for walks. Next, he wandered among the shops. He looked in a pet shop window. Nearby was a florist's. Mr. Ben looked in there as well. As he walked on, he recognized the lane which he'd strolled into. It was the lane with the unusual costume shop, the shop which adventures could start from. He stood outside for a moment and then went in. As if by magic, the shopkeeper appeared. Good morning, sir. How good to see you again. Can I help you? He asked. Mr. Ben looked around the shop. Everything seems to have been animals and plants this morning, he said. What's in keeping with that? How about this, sir? Asked the shopkeeper and stepped over to a khaki-coloured outfit. A hunter? Asked Mr. Ben. Not a bad idea. May I see if it fits? He looked at the door of the fitting room and wondered if another adventure would start from there. Mr. Ben took the outfit and went into the fitting room. He was soon changed and he looked at himself in the mirror. After Mr. Ben had admired himself in his new clothes, he looked for the door. Not the one that he'd come through, but the other door which might lead to an adventure. Without waiting, Mr. Ben walked through. Outside the door, Mr. Ben found himself in an open space in the jungle. Nearby stood another man dressed like Mr. Ben. As soon as he saw Mr. Ben, he called out impatiently to him, Ah, there you are. I suppose you're my new assistant. Now, come on. Pick up my things and let's get started. Mr. Ben was worried by the hunter's gun and was determined to stop him shooting anything. But he did as he was told and they started to walk through the jungle. As they walked, Mr. Ben's new companion did all the talking. He boasted and boasted how good he was at hunting and shooting. You're very lucky to be with me, he said to Mr. Ben. I must be the greatest big game hunter that ever lived. I'll show you. He took his rifle from Mr. Ben and pointed it at a little bird that sat nearby. Mr. Ben was quite worried for the bird and said, uh, Surely, if you're so good, you don't bother with little birds. What? 
Uh, oh, no, oh, no, of course not, said the hunter. They walked on, and the hunter pretending that he hadn't really intended to shoot the bird. A little later, they saw a snake. As soon as Mr. Ben saw the hunter start to raise his rifle, he said, I don't suppose you bother with snakes either. <laughs> laughed the hunter. Uh, certainly not. I was just, um, I was just trying the sights, he added. They walked on and came to a hill with a deer standing on it. Now there is something to shoot, said the hunter. No, no, said Mr. Ben. We'll find something larger in a minute. And he hurried the hunter away. For a while, they stood by a river. Mr. Ben was glad that the hunter was content to watch the fish without wanting to shoot them. Across the river, Mr. Ben saw a crocodile. There's a crocodile over there, but uh, let's wait for a larger animal, he said. The hunter never even started to raise his rifle. Next, it was a lion standing quietly outside its cave. Not large enough, said Mr. Ben, and they left the lion in peace. After that, it was a giraffe. Tall, said Mr. Ben, um, but not really fat enough for the greatest big game hunter. Perhaps not, said the hunter, and didn't bother to shoot. By now, both the hunter and Mr. Ben were hungry. They sat down in an open space to eat. While they were eating, a hippo wandered by. The hunter wanted to get his rifle. Stop, called Mr. Ben. I know that hippo is big, but he's not the biggest animal, and only the biggest is good enough for the greatest hunter. Right, said the hunter, and they finished their lunch. The hunter wanted a little nap after lunch. And while he slept, Mr. Ben decided to have a stroll. He wanted to think. So far, he'd saved the animals, but how would it all end? As he walked, he felt the ground shake under his feet. The further he walked, the more it shook. In the end, it shook so much that Mr. Ben fell over. Then Mr. Ben could see a herd of elephants all shaking with fear. Mr. Ben managed to calm them enough to be able to stand up again. You've saved the other animals, but we're the largest. We're certain to be shot, said one of the elephants. I've been thinking, said Mr. Ben. You've just helped me find the answer. Listen to my idea. The hunter was just waking as Mr. Ben arrived back and was eager to get on with the hunt. Mr. Ben led the way, and they marched deeper and deeper into the jungle. Mr. Ben pretending all the time to search for animals as he went. came to a clearing and stopped. There stood the whole herd of elephants. Just the thing, said Mr. Ben. The largest animals for the greatest big game hunter. The hunter was delighted and raised his rifle, ready to shoot. At that moment, Mr. Ben sat down. That was the signal for the elephants. They jumped up and down for all they were worth. The 
ground shook and shook and shook. The hunter didn't have a chance. Every shot he fired went into the ground or into the air. Eventually, all his shots were fired and the elephants, untouched, walked quietly away. Mr. Ben pretended to be disgusted. Call yourself a great hunter. If you can't hit a huge elephant, you can't hit anything. You're not safe with a rifle. Then more kindly he said, why don't you sell the rifle and buy a camera? At least if you missed, you'd still get a picture of something. Mr. Ben and the hunter returned to the hunter's camp. There, believe it or not, was a man selling cameras. Mr. Ben smiled. He thought he recognized the salesman. Put the things in the tent and help us choose a camera, Mr. Ben was told. Mr. Ben stepped into the tent, and as he did so, he found he'd stepped back into the changing room of the shop. There on the floor were his own clothes. He changed back into them. Mr. Ben went back into the shop and returned the hunter's outfit. I never did help choose a camera, he said. No, but judging by this, he chose well, sir, said the shopkeeper. And he gave Mr. Ben a photograph. May I keep it, asked Mr. Ben. Certainly, said the shopkeeper. As Mr. Ben left the shop, he turned and said, Thank you. I'll be back to see you again soon. Mr. Ben had enjoyed his adventure, but he was happy to be back in Festive Road. At his gate, he smiled as he pulled out the photograph and looked at it. I'll always keep it, he thought, just to help me remember. Mm -hmm.